Marsha Metz, thank you so much for talking to us on Talk Beliefs. So this interview will be part of my series on religious behavioral modification camps. So Marsha, before we get into your story, can you tell, tell us a little bit about your background? A uh, basic Midwestern girl from Indiana, went to a very good school, uh, just your basic, basic kid who grew up in the Midwest, um, just trying to make it. Uh, I, I have a narcissistic person as a mother, um, and I didn't realize that growing up until much later, of course, but, um, you know, the, the level of abuse that I got from her and, and uh, my father, who allowed it to happen, who who never stopped it. Um, it, it was very hurtful, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure what else you can say about that, but uh, I don't think anybody realizes they're being abused while it's happening as a kid, of course, and looking back on it, you go, oh, okay. Um, so that, that greatly affected me. Marsha, for anyone who doesn't know, what are behavioral modification camps, and what are the aims of these schools? There's hundreds, if not thousands, in America alone where you can basically send your child to be fixed uh, if you have a problem with them, basically. Uh, and, and mostly what this is, is religious fundamentalist people just have a place where they can dump their children when they are tired of them acting out from the crap that they're raised in and that's basically it. Uh, you know, you, you, there's a lot of well-meaning people who are just <laughs> nuts for their religion or whatever. And if you don't conform to absolutely everything that they want you to do and be and dress and talk like and act like, you know, that they're, you know, they think quite normal teenage behavior is somehow horrible. We saw that in the uh, documentary, Kidnapped for Christ. And uh, last uh, year it was, I interviewed David Wernsman and he went into the, uh, the the details that didn't even come out in the documentary. And uh, that was because he, he came out as gay to his parents and they, they didn't like that. And they sent him down there to be fixed. It doesn't even have to be something as severe as I'm gay, mom and dad. It, it you know, that's an extreme. It can be like, well, we just don't like your friends and we don't like how you're dressing and or, or completely normal teenage behavior where you have to learn to become your own human being instead of a clone of your parents. This is psychologically an essential thing that has to happen when we all grow up. Um, and many religious fundamentalist people cannot handle that at all. There is no questioning of anything. You just do what we say and we, you know, that none of that is tolerated. And these places have popped up to, well, you can send your kid here. And, you know, they'll, they'll look at your kid and come back with, oh, yes, your child is very bad. You know, if they don't come to us, they're going to die. They will get themselves killed. I mean, they, they take it to the absolute extreme for completely normal teenage behavior. And that's how they make their money. These places are set. They're not set up to help your child in any way. These places are number one there to make money, period. They are there to make money. And depending on who started them, as in the case of New Horizons, uh, Pastor Blossom was a pedophile. He started it to make money be outside the law and be able to rape children, period. Wow. And he got away with it and they still got away with it. And, you know, even if the worst case scenario of their the children are not being raped in these places, they're still there to make money, not help your kid and have a level of power that maybe they didn't get in their lives. Um, at any other place because you can't talk back and you know you're getting physically abused in other ways other than sexual but that's what it is it's money and power there's, there's many of these schools especially in the states but the one we're talking about that david went to in the documentary and you went to it's escuela caribe which is down in the dominican republic 
t could you tell us the story of, of, of exactly why you were sent there? It's it's three three little places under an umbrella group. Um, uh, it's all New Horizons Youth Ministries uh, in Marion, Indiana, and that was the main campus. They had a summer camp over the summer in Missinabi Woods Academy, uh, Missinabi, Canada, uh, and Escuela de Caribe is the really bad one that all the kids knew you don't want to go to that one and that was in the Dominican Republic um, so the reason I got sent there was uh, basically a, a completely normal rational age appropriate response to being tired of being bullied and abused at home by my parents <laughs> uh, quite honestly and a lot of kids go through this and that was not acceptable to my mother, who, as I've said before, um, there there is absolutely no tolerance to any questioning of her or uh, you dress how she wants you to, you act how she wants you to. Um, but you were just being a normal teenager, and this is the case in, in most of the kids that are sent down there or to, to similar places. Absolutely. Uh, anybody, well, you must have been a bad kid to get sent down there, and that's just absolutely not the truth. You could be sent down there just for absolutely any reason that your parents would find. And as I've said, most religious fundamentalist people, there is no questioning of your religious dogma or how they want you to dress or act or eat or walk or talk. And, and if you do anything different or, you know, they will find a place to dump you, to brainwash you, to come back as a good child. Because again, these places will look at your kid and of course they're going to find that oh yes your child is so bad if they don't get help then they'll end up killing themselves it'll be horrible and we can fix it for just six thousand dollars a month so is that the general price we're talking about that was the the price for uh, uh i i'm most kids who went to this program other programs of course charge more uh if you were a ward of the state which they very much liked taking in wards of the state because they could charge the state even more per child to get even more money so is it mostly uh privileged evangelical rich or mid or well-off middle class parents that send their kids or are there others for the most part yes but the, they were very happy to take poor families and uh, do a little sliding scale but uh, they would get all the money that they possibly could. Um, but yes, m mostly the, this is a rich person's problem or middle class people. They'll just do anything to save your child. Wouldn't you want to save your child? And they'll just steal your money and abuse your child and send them back as a basket case. So uh, the, the idea that, um, well, you must have been a bad child to get sent there is a stigma that all of us live with and it's why um it's why you don't speak out you, you want to keep it a secret these things that have happened to you and it's why so few of us get help uh, because we have this thing put on us and and that's a part of how they get away with doing what they do they mm. put this stigma on people and so you're not able to speak out and you're not able to get help. And so it makes you look like you deserved it. And we're good people. We're, we're trying to help horrible kids like you. These camps are not just big on enforcing Christian values and behavior, but on discipline in general. And they enforce discipline in some pretty harsh and unusual ways. So can, can you talk about some of the rules, regulations and punishments that you and the other kids had to face? The, the rules regarding communication with your peers were very strict there. Uh, it was very limiting and it's very detrimental to social development. Um, it wasn't just the limited amount of people you could talk to. The content of your conversation had to be never about home or your past, never about popular music, 
magazines, books, or movies other than Christian ones or those specifically sanctioned by the program. And you were never ever to talk about how you really feel about anything. Every conversation needed to be about the present and upholding program propaganda. And your facial expressions and body language were harshly scrutinized. We need facial expressions. To pleasant expression on our faces and bodies at all times, or we were considered insubordinate and rebellious. This um, is very cult-like, this, this sounds like to me. Absolutely. It absolutely was a cult. You know, you can't talk to anybody except, oh, you can talk to this person or that person because it was a level system. So all of the lower level people, oh, well, you can't talk to each other because you're just negative. Uh, you can only talk to people who have reached a certain level. And I was never even allowed to acknowledge the existence of any of the boys or lower level girls um, to the point where if I would have, like, we were at the beach because we did have one free day if we weren't cleaning, uh, where the house parents would take us all in the van and we'd go to the beach. But if one of the, the girls that I wasn't allowed to talk to was out drowning in the ocean, I would have gotten beaten because I noticed that they were even existing. I know it absolutely sounds insane. It sounds insane. And that's another reason why they're, they get away with this stuff because it sounds absolutely insane and completely not true. And I, and it's absolutely mm. true. Mm. It's so bad. Um, I, I had, I really needed to learn how to socialize with people my own age growing up i grew up out in the country and i didn't really have very many friends and i went to a very private christian school so making friends and being with people my own age and, and learning how to communicate with other human beings and and make friends and have conversations is something i desperately needed to learn and so to be taken to this place and absolutely isolated from all other humans and treated in such a way where it was absolutely detrimental to me. I, and all of us have problems with being in public and dealing with people and learning to make friends and, and trust other humans when we were horribly abused, isolated, and you could be potentially dragged out of your bunk in the middle of the night and beaten, literally and beaten. You've, you've seen this happen. Yes. Oh, it happened to me personally. I was drug yeah. out of my bed multiple times in the middle of the night. Um, for one instance, because I was drawing rainbows and unicorns and stars and things in my notebook and they didn't like that. So they drug me out uh, in the middle of the night, uh, made me do 500 squat thrusts and then 500 push-ups, and then he beat me and then sent me back to my bunk. And they have these things called uh, casitas, isn't it, when you run up and down? Did you get that? At, at our place, um, there was, uh, it was basically built on a hill, uh, not quite a 45-degree angle, but very close, and there was a boy's house at the bottom of the hill. That, the, the school was at the bottom of the hill, then there was a boy's house, then a boy's house, then our house, and then at the very top of the hill was a girl's house. And you basically run up a, a, I believe it was a quarter of a mile, but it felt like a mile. <laughs> and you go to the bottom and you run up as fast as you can in 30 seconds. And you better make it in that 30 seconds or else you're going to run it again. And then you'll run it again. And then you'll run it again until you pass out, which I did most of the time, or you make it. And this is all in the name of God, but it sounds like it, it's more like uh, in the name of uh of being sociopaths just absolutely abusive to children at what point uh do uh i got one of these casitas because uh, i was in the the um the canada program and i knew one of the boys there like i never i was never able to talk to him ever but i knew him so in the dominican republic he was there and one day there was a baseball game all the boys were playing baseball and we were all on the sidelines all of us girls watching them play baseball or I'm not even sure why, uh, but uh, there they were, and everybody was cheering and happy, and I stupidly went, go, Ed! 
Well, I got a casita for that. <laughs> now, why, why would that be? Exactly. Why? Exactly. Why? Why? At, at, how do you help people by isolating them and making them to where they can't even realize, you, you can't recognize that anybody else other than certain people on the correct level exist? This helps people how? It just really? sounds like they wanted to break you down, and really that's all they cared about. In Kidnapped for Christ, they admit they want to do that. And for what reason? So that they'll, you'll send home good little robots? For doing what? For doing what? Being normal teenagers? For wanting to wear clothes that you like or style your hair a certain way? Or, God forbid, question the bullshit that you're taught in your church? So many of these kids, sure, some kids have some big problems. And, and here's the thing. If you have problems, and, and I should have said this at the beginning, but if you have problems with your children, please, for the love of God, find a local licensed family counselor. I talked to so many people who are like, well, I'm having serious problems with my children. I'm like, that's great. Here's what you do, local licensed family counseling, where they do not abuse and neglect your children and bring back people with complex post-traumatic stress disorder for the rest of their lives. And this is what we all deal with. And it's so hard to find somebody who is trained to help complex post-traumatic stress disorder people. The, the most we have is people who understand that veterans are dealing with this, but we were not in a combat situation and yet we were, so. I mean, how did your time in Esquila Caribe affect your life after you returned home? Pretty uh, badly by the sounds of it. I deal daily with anxiety, depression, um, most of us have very, very bad times learning to trust people again. It's very hard to get over such abuse, especially when you're just kicked out at the end. Um, they must know this in Escuela Caribe and places like this. They, they must have heard how the PTSD kicks in or they just don't care, I take it. They absolutely don't care and they don't acknowledge that that happens because, oh, we help kids. We've helped so many kids and, and we get results. And you'll see them saying that on uh, uh, Kidnapped for Christ. The parents don't seem to know how bad these places are, I don't think. I'm not, I'm not making an excuse for them, but they don't seem to know all the nitty gritty of these places when they see the, the glossy brochure at the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. They lie to the parents as well. And they do just as much work to try and keep the parents out of the loop. Uh, they, they just feed them a line of garbage and the parents eat it up and believe it. They, they show you a nice glossy brochure of kids riding horses. And I never saw a horse my entire time there. I would have loved to have gone horseback riding or just had one person to talk to me about actual help about how to deal with people and how to make friends and learn to cook, for goodness sakes. So only the high level kids were allowed in the kitchen to be able to help the house mother cook. I, I didn't learn anything except how to shut up and how to hide my face and, and how to just not ask any questions. And how did this help me? It, it absolutely didn't. Uh, we all deal with major trust issues, anxiety, depression, uh, survivors of these schools have far more likelihood of committing suicide. I, most of us. And it has happened, hasn't it? It has happened. We lose at least one a year to suicide. I, I'll just, I'll just read this. After being socially limited in our formative years, many of us have struggled socially and with interpersonal and intimate relationships. Um, many of us tried to experience as much as our newfound freedom as possible, but without any guidance, because those that would have guided us were no longer trustworthy. There was always the fear of being taken back to the Dominican Republic, 
at least one alumnus was there until the age of 21 and a good number were sent back just before their 18th birthdays. No authority figure could be trusted. Many of the survivors have PTSD, complex PTSD is what we understand now. The nightmares last for decades. Other triggers interfere with our ability to live life fully. Instead, we fear those situations that make us, it makes terror, disassociation, and panic attacks arise. Um, so many, so many kids come back with so many problems and, and we're reaching out to try and find it. But like I said, there are very few places that can understand being sent to a place where no minute was safe. I didn't go to the bathroom alone. I had somebody watching me go to the bathroom. I had somebody watching me take a shower. I was never alone. And my face, I couldn't have a face like, how dare you? Or be a face like I'm scared or no, I had to smile all the time. And Gosh. this is not healthy. This is not healthy. And this is what you're sending your kids to. So and I know you run a support page on Facebook, but are are there groups like I know there is there's SIA, S I A, um, which uh, helps uh, people who have been to camps like this. But is there anyone who's actually actively trying to shut these places down? We're all trying in our different ways to 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 get this information out. The the problem is um, after a certain time period. Oh well, it's you, it, you've waited too long, so you can't do anything about it now. Um, and the, and the as we saw with uh, Escuela Caribe, it did shut down, and now it's still going. Yeah, they, they changed names. Uh, the, the Blossoms uh, gave it to some new person who now runs it under a different name, but it's the same thing in the same place with a lot of the same staff. So when they say, oh, things are better now, well, you just admitted that things were bad uh, and it hasn't changed. How could it? How could it? Mm. You know, are mm. any of your people licensed? Really? Are they from something other than a seminary institute? Really? Do you actually have any people with actual degrees to help kids and counseling? And if they do, I don't trust them. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the Facebook page that you have and what they can expect from it? It's the Survivors of New Horizons Youth. Uh, that's the one that I run, and, and it is purely just for survivors. And it, it is specifically for survivors who uh, understand that this place was horrible and detrimental because there are quite a few people who would like to inform us that we're just liars and you just need to get over it. And it helped you. Didn't you realize that it helped you? Uh, so those people are not allowed. <laughs> and so this is a group and you ask to join and some specific questions I take are asked and then you decide whether these people are genuine victims. Well, if you went to the school and you understand that this place was terrible, then you're welcome. But if you didn't go to that school, then we, we just, it's just for us so that we can vent about the world or talk about problems without being scared of somebody's going to look at me like I'm crazy or they just don't understand. The uh, the camp that you went to is certainly not the only one. There's uh, like about a hundred of them that uh, that I've heard about, mostly in the States, but I think possibly here in England and other parts of the world. Yeah. And if anything, um, they're cropping up more rather than closing down. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a big problem. Religious fundamentalism is growing like a plague. Mm. Tell me like about it. And uh, there will always be places where if you don't conform to what they believe, they will send you somewhere where you'll come back agreeing with them. And if that isn't the definition of a cult, I don't know what is. And a lot of people tell us, well, you're just making it up. You're just making stories. This None of this could be possibly true. Um, Julia Shears has a book, Jesus Land, uh, detailing she went to the same school that I did, only she was in 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 the 60s or 70s it's been going on for quite that long uh kidnapped for christ we've been mentioning that it, it's a movie which once they know the cameras are on you of course you're not going to see what really goes on but you can get a feeling of something's not right oh gosh i mean uh, this is how i learned about all this and uh it's it's one of the most 
heart pounding documentaries I've watched and to hear that actually didn't scrape the surface because uh, the director Kate Logan was sort of like pushed away at one point and kept away from cameras. Yeah. Even so you got this horrible feeling of dread that there's something really wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, on the day that I finally got back to Marion, the Marion program, I said, well, I'm going to leave now. So I need you to call my dad so he can come pick me up. Uh, they had a car come and say, get in the car. We're, we're going to the main school so we can talk to you. And I'm like, I'm not getting in that car with you. Uh, I, I will walk. We can have a talk, but I'm not getting in that car with you. And they took me in a room and, and basically said, you're not going anywhere. And I said, I'm 18. If I have to walk home, I will. And they were just astounded that I had as much of my brain left, quite honestly because all the other kids would have been, even though you're 18, you're still scared to death of these people. They can still beat the crap out of you. Uh, you know, what they did to the boys is even hor more horrible. We, we have firsthand reports of, I, I didn't do the dishes right well enough. So they got all of the other boys in a circle and everybody would take turns beating them until they couldn't get up. This is the things that I heard going on in the middle of the night. So, uh, you can't know, the, go on any longer, but, yeah, but they, they uh, well, hopefully with the work that you're doing, that, that perhaps um, something will start and some investigations will be done and perhaps one day they, they will be closed down. This is why I'm, I'm talking to you because people need to know that it's real. We're not making it up. We are not bad kids that deserve to have this thing happen. I'm 43. This was 16 to 19 when this happened to me. You, If I would have gotten over it, it'd be evaporate. It's not going away. We're not changing our stories. It's still happening. It needs to stop. We're all desperate for a way to get it to stop. We're trying as hard as we can. We talk to lawyer after lawyer after a state agency place and they all look at us like well we just don't we, it's been so long ago and and well there's just not enough people coming forward or they've been paid off quite honestly because mike pence is in on some of this stuff so when you understand that somebody like mike pence is profiting from these places and he's part of the secret elite group that is paying off whoever needs to be paid off to keep it under the radar so that they keep on going so that they keep on profiting then you start to understand why it's still going on why is it still going on we've been screaming about this for years we're making books we're making movies we're trying to get the word out it's not a lie we're not bad kids we're now middle-aged people and we're still begging for somebody to help it, and the most we can do is get the word out that if you're having problems with your kids, you need family counseling, not shipping your kid off to a place where, oh, yeah, we'll make your kid come back. Great. It, it's fine. Yeah, we'll make them come. Yeah, it's fine. Red flags pop up and they just go, hmm, okay. It's, it must be part of the process to not talk to my child. It must be part of the process to send my child to a third world country even though they don't have a visa how do they get them out of the country i wonder red flags pop up please take a minute to realize that's yes listen and there are places right. that you can go there are links like i mentioned um sia so yeah uh, mm -hmm. is there anywhere else which uh you can you can tell us about now and that links i could put in the description below new horizons alumni um is started by another survivor uh, two other survivors, uh, and we are putting together a, a much bigger, better website, so more is coming. But you can go there and read testimonials uh, from many survivors about what happened, what they endured, and how you can help and spread the word to get it to stop. And for survivors, there'll be more resources coming soon, but we're working hard on that. Um, and if you want to just read more about it uh julia shears jesus land uh the whisper by shirley joe peterson and, and this is a book by uh, the founder of new horizons um pastor blossom 
this is his daughter that he was raping her entire life. And it's a book she wrote about it. Um, so yeah, that's the type of guy he was. Uh, and uh, Teresa Rosando has uh, a, a, a like an eight part series, I believe, um, from the Indianapolis Nouveau called To Hell and Back. You can Google it and read all about it. Um, she's doing more exposés, but uh, uh, more are coming from Deidre Sargucci. She's uh, got a book coming out soon and we're, we're all getting older and trying to get the word out in any way we can and we will. And uh, I just want to thank you so much, Marsha, for opening your heart and telling people about this. And hopefully with this series I'm doing, people will discover a bit more about the problem and perhaps can formulate a few ideas on what to do. And uh, nothing left for me to do except thank, say thank you very much for coming on to Talk Police. Thank you so much. Thank you for doing me. It's so necessary to get the word out that this is happening so that maybe we can end it one day. Thank you so much.